All right. Um, chapter seven is on exponents, and this is a huge part of your reading. So you, can, you could probably get like at least at least three questions, maybe even more, that deal with like this exponent chapter. Um, one way, if they want to be really nice, and this is kind of just basic stuff, but you never know. Um, with this completion, if you guys saw f of 16, what would you put the 16 is for? That switch up. So this is really like saying 16 to the 3 fourths. The biggest thing is you don't want to mess up with your calculator work. Right? Make sure all your fractions are in parentheses. Or I also showed you guys if you have an updated calculator, right? We can do um, that as the line plus button. Right, to get your three fourths. Right, if not, it's not a big deal, just make sure you have parentheses. Is it eight? Never say three inches out of the Great. Then, I mean, these are pretty basic, but you must let the calculator come back and get to it. Okay. All right, so let's try to put this down. See what you get. Eight over 27, right, to the negative two squared. Make you some carrots with your excellent. I'm going to go down for you next. Okay, I'm also going to go up. Alright, so um, one thing that's going to come up somewhere on your test, I don't know where, we could ask you this a lot of different ways, is this idea of converting fractional exponents to radicals and radicals to fractional exponents. Um, and just to kind of review the moving, right? What you guys did is if you saw something on the outside, like that little three went to the bottom, and the x went, up on top, went on top. Right, it's kind of like this like, moving thing. So you don't, have to, you don't have to reduce it, but you're just going to rewrite stuff. So if I have 4 to the 3 fourths, where would the 4 go? Outside. Good. And the 3 would go as the exponent underneath. And going the other way. Actually, here, we can do this. Do you have to? Can you still tell you that on the outside of the radical, you don't have to put the two? Right, two. good, yeah, exactly. Right. This is a special case. When um when you guys have the one half, it's exactly what Anthony just said. You have to write the two up there. And it's like a secret two, you don't ever see it. So same thing, you could write a two and you could write the one, but you won't ever see um the two as the index or the one as the exponent. It's just going to look like that when you see it. How would you guys write um, example 5 as a fractional exponent? Four, two, three. Two there is awesome. Nice and nice. Yeah. How is that part? Just go to the bottom, two goes on top? Alright. So, see, you know what the four actually is? Oh, so that's going to come in some of the stuff we're going to do down here. Right. Uh, one of the other things you guys did with exponents was kind of simplifying things. Like what do you say when you have a positive exponent? And you really have to make sure you guys remember your rules. So if you saw something on the outside, what did you have to do with that? Distribute. You kind of distribute it through. Good. And make sure you bring it to the big number too. It's got to go to every single part. So when you guys do your distribution, on the bottom, make sure you bring it to that big two. Okay, so it goes two to the negative two. And then when you guys are mul or doing your exponent to another exponent, it's multiplication is your goal. So this should be x to the negative six and then y to the positive fourteen. Make sure your first step is perfect. Okay, four was and then go to like the calendar and find the name of how it is. Got it. So once you guys are here, you want to move things. If you have a negative exponent, remember it's in the bottom, it's got to go to the top. So there's a negative exponent, it's got to go to the top. This one also has to go to the top. But if it's in the top, you guys have to move it to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
let's do all our moving parts. We can do all that. Alright, we're going to have three. Um, now we have two to the positive two that's coming up. Make sure when you guys do the moving, your exponent changes. Now why is this both up there? Get from the one. Uh, X to the six. Make sure you do this up first. Um, and then, what else we have? Going down. After the fourth is going down, then we have a Y of the fourth to go there. Okay, so just take a look. Make sure everything's going to move in the right spot. If it's positive, leave it where it is. You only have to turn it to the end of that. Anything that we can do that's the same letter, we want to do the same thing to number skipping. Yeah, you could, you could do it two ways, okay? You can think about it like subtraction or canceling. Canceling sometimes is easier because it already puts it where it should be. Okay. All right, so if you were going to subtract them, technically you would have no fraction anymore. You would have to do thing. But if you cancel, like, what I mean by canceling is that, well, there's five lines up top, 14 in the bottom. Where's there more left? On the bottom, how many more? Nine. So that would be in the bottom. So that way it gets rid of like the move, like extra moving. I think it's just easier. Um, but either way, it's fine. Yeah, actually. We do. Yep. Good. Good. Um, let's see. What about the x to the six to the, to the fourth? Good. Where's that going to go, Angela? Huh? Good job. Now, what the other thing that you're saying is this, right in here. We can simplify. Make sure you do come back, so. So 2 squared is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. So our final is we got a 12 on top, an x squared on top, over and over. So y is 9. You guys remember doing this a little bit? Yeah. Um, this is a big thing. This is kind of how I think that you guys will see that fractional exponent radical, right? They kind of like force you into it. So in this problem, right, if you have a negative exponent, like x is a negative 2 fifth, where does this have to go to be positive? Bottom, good. Okay, so if we brought this to the bottom, we got x to the positive 2 fifths. What's on top? One. Good. You gotta leave a placeholder. Right. Okay. Now this, we look, is not an option. So what we have to go back and think about is how do we rewrite a fractional exponent as a radical? Yeah, thank you. Good job. Very nice. So um, would you say the denominator goes to the outside? The two goes to the the yeah, exponent, very nice. Because you have to bring it to the bottom because the rest is over. Well, okay. So, so if it, if it was, um, okay, so the answer why is that the one on top, right? Well, if you move something out of the top and you bring it to the bottom, there's nothing left. Right? You've got to keep it a placeholder. Right? And the reason why you have to make this into a radical is because this, these two things are the same, but do you have 1 over x to the 2 fifths as an option? Oh, so they'll force you to do this. This is kind of how it will show up. So they'll make you have to know. Yeah. Does that make a little bit more sense now? Like how they're... Right, so they're, they're looking for um, not simplest form. Um, they're just looking for something that's like a clip. Yeah. Not, I don't think so like this. This would be pretty rough. <laughs> um, they would have, you will see, the thing is with this, they are not going to have you rationalize things with like pit roots or like cubic roots, only square roots. You won't see that way. Well, you could do by half. Like if you had, um, no, like, 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 yeah. Alright, and to answer your kind of question, if you had this, you would still have to multiply by radical x to get rid of it. Yeah. Now, these same rules would apply though. You'd have like radical x over the radical would go away and it's just like x. So you don't need a number. That's where you guys see it. I don't think they would be 
they're not going to do something like that for a walking right? Like, that's one thing I think you definitely won't have to have. Right, but they like that equivalent stuff. Um, if anything's the simplest form for um, the words like with a rational denominator, those are all clues that like you want to get rid of graph on the Y. But if it's just equivalent, they want to know like what would they see the same thing in. That's why I know it's like when you're showing rules for certain things, have some of them overlap. Right? Um, see, this is kind of like more what you were thinking too. Like why do I have to do certain things? Like why do I have to change the way it looks? So if you look at this one, they give it to you guys as a radical, right? But look at your options. Do you guys have any radicals left? No. So this is kind of your clue that, well, I have no radicals down here, so what I have to do is change this into a fractional exponent. Because look at the bottom. You have all fractional exponents here. It's probably something to do with that. So if you guys take what's in here, what's under the radical, we want to use a fractional exponent. And then you know what that term would be. Yeah. One over four. Good enough. Cool. Well, the outside part goes to the bottom. Okay. And um, we don't have an exponent that this is all raised to. So, really, this whole thing is like raised to the first power. All right, if you want to be safe, put the one there. Okay. Now you're coming back to your exponent rule. So, you have to an exponent on the outside, so we're going to take this and distribute it through. Oh, it's four through? Okay, you can't really do that. There's, it's, you could, like, this is not answering the question. Like, if they had things with radicals in them, so you want to do it that way. But because you have the fractional exponent, you have to distribute this. Okay, so if you, this is really tricky. If you guys do 16 to the 1 4, okay. now if you have exponents, other exponents, what's your rule? Good, so multiply up, and because we have fractions that are multiplying, pop, pop, bottom, bottom, I like it. So if 2 times 1 is 2 on the bottom, you want to make it a 1, 4 times 4 is 4. Okay. Same thing with this one. 7 times 1 is 7, 1 times 4 is 4. Okay. So, you gotta reduce some things. In this part here, be really careful. What is 16 to raise to the one fourth? Two. Two, good. This is two. That's then Andrew, so you're saying reduce that. One half, good. And then I don't think we can reduce the other part. But the reason why, like, you guys are forced to do this, like, conversion, going from a radical to a fraction, that's really is because how your options look. Right? So it's not doing radicals anymore. So it's kind of like we force you to do it that way. Right. Um, I don't think you'll get any of these exponential equations. They don't come up very often, but just in case. It's always something people forget to do when they solve it anyways. No, that's next. Next week. <gasps> yes. You got it. Okay. Right. Whenever you guys have the x in the base, right, what you want to do to solve for x is that, well, the first thing you need to do is get the base alone. Right? You want to make sure that there is, you know, nothing being like, you know, we don't have a 2 plus or anything, nothing being added, multiplied. Okay. You want just the base to be by itself, right? Which you have nothing else going on for us. So once the base is alone, what we're going to use is the reciprocal of the exponent. So what's the reciprocal of 2 thirds? Two. Now, when you guys do this reciprocal exponent, the reason why you use that is these cancel out. Make sure that you keep this fractional as an exponent, though. Okay. So when you guys type it into your calculator, it's going to be like 8 carats. So you should get this like 22.62. I don't think you change it to a fraction. No. We'll do 22.6. Can I ask a question like this? Yeah. Yeah. 
don't know. They'll have, it's Mr. Reed's discussion. They have to call you. So they'll tell you something. All right, why don't you guys try this next one? See if you can figure out what you're doing. Good. So how many places did you move your decimal? Five to the left. Good, really. Good job. Because it's negative, it means less. So one, two, three, four, five. It's like point zero, 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 one, five. Right. Sorry, these are just like basic ones. They have to tell you where it around to reach this question. Okay. Okay. But that's fine. It was just a good job. All right. Now, um, this is a tough one. This, if they give you guys something, I think it'll look like this. In this part, is your base alone? Yeah. No. Okay. What do you need to move first? 14. Good answer. Right. Right. All you have to do is addition or subtraction before you want to do multiplication and division. Do minus 14. Negative 12. Love it. All right. That's going to be a good job if I write negative 4. Okay. So we have b to the 1 third equals, this is going to give you guys a positive 3. So once you guys get to this step, once the base is alone, now you can do the fraction or the reciprocal of the fractional exponent. Right. So I think we're kind of find those three cubes. Mm -hmm. No, that's a common thing. I've already tried to just multiply them. This time, I mean, you, I doubt you'll see one of these. Right? They're not very big. Um, you'll probably get something with changing to radical from fractional exponent. You'll get something with moving, then maybe you have anything with positive and reducing your exponent. And then the other part you'll get, this is always on like every regions exam, is this stuff. Right? These are really big questions. Um, where you're trying to find x, but the difference is x is in the exponent. Right? When you guys have things like this, your goal is to get the bases to be the same. Right? Um, set the exponents equal to each other, yep, and then you solve it. The big thing is look, make sure you only go smaller. You can only break them down, you can't make them bigger. And you have to use exponents in this. So use the smaller one for some help. You have a 2, is it 3 or what? Oh, close. 2 to the 158. So you want to think, does 2 to something give us 8? To the 3rd, good job. Okay. So in order to get our bases the same, um, my left one, I don't have to change this. It's already a 2. But instead of the 8, what I'm going to do is get rid of my 8, and I'm going to make it this instead. 2 cubed. And now they have the same base. Don't forget to break down your other x. So now once you guys have the same base, what we're going to do is take the exponents and set them equal to each other. So this exponent is 2x equals, please watch out with this part that you guys remember to distribute through. So 3 times 5 is 15 minus 3x. Why do you have to find x? 
What would you guys do? Add three up. Good. Do you guys remember those a little bit? Kind of, kind of. Okay. This is what you're going to see. They love these kind of questions, and they're all over the place on your test. They can range from a multiple choice. They could be a part two. They could be a part three. And you can see them come up as like a part four with a six pointer. It just depends how hard the following part becomes. So this next one is kind of an example of um, this must have been a part three question because it was four points, right? Um, so this is a, just a more difficult type of problem that you guys could see, but dealing with like the same idea. So why don't you guys see if you can make this equal and you can start solving. Right to factoring. When you go to factor, what's the first thing you should look for? <coughs> Good. GCF. Make it easy for yourself. Because if you can make it easier, do that. What's the GCF here, Andrew? Two. Good job. Take the two out, make your one bubble. Great. Now, inside this, it's a nice trinomial. You have something with a, like a one in front. These are the really nice ones where we can just do our double bubble. Okay. And we can take x squared and x and x. What are your factors of two that can make a one? Two and one. Good, okay. Now, since you want a positive one, which one needs to cross? Two, good. This one's going to be a minus. Nice. Now, at the end, your last step, what do you can set each of these two? Zero. Zero. Good, so two equals zero. This one's going to be x equals great, and then one. Awesome. Oh, wait, sorry. And then, yeah, can we, can we have two equals zero? No. No, doesn't work. Right, so can zero make sense. Um, if you, well, Andy, where was the point? Um, can you check these if you wanted to to make sure both sides would be equal? Yeah. So on the regions again, you don't have to check this, but you know, if you are getting values of x, you want to make sure that they work. So what you could do is put them back in here and make sure that both sides would be the same thing. Right, you could do that. This kind of jogs the memory. Uh, no? Yeah. Alright, good. Okay, good job. Um,